Good morning. Welcome to Golden Gate Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Mary Murray Shelton, the community spiritual leader here, and you are welcome. I am delighted that you're here with us this morning. This month of May, we've been talking about holy, holy uprising, like holy as in completely, holy as in holy, uprising, meaning uh, an uh, up-leveling of our whole consciousness and understanding of life and who we are. So it's been kind of a tall order and also a fun ride. Today, I'm talking about live a new story boldly. You know those stories you tell everybody when you're getting to know each other? Maybe some of those stories aren't serving. Let's take a look today and see why and what might be possible around that. So as we get ready to begin, we have our fabulous, adorable, wonderful, um, raucous, spiritual musical director, Karen Drucker is here with us this morning, and Trish Brady is our morning practitioner. So without any more pause, I'm gonna turn it over to Karen for the music and then Trish for the prayer. Good morning, everybody. I'm adorable, thank you, Mary. I, don't, I wasn't feeling adorable, but now I am. So thank you for that. Good morning, everybody. I have a song from a while ago. Linda Webb Kakaba, wonderful, wonderful music director of Santa Rosa, who has since passed. And she wrote this beautiful, beautiful chant. Let me teach it to you and you can sing with me. Everything I need to know about what lies before me everything that i need to know about what lies before me is available to me is available to me through the mind of god within me got it everything i need to know about what lies before me everything that i need to know about what lies before me is available to me is available to me through the mind of god within me everything i need to do to do about what lies before me everything that i need to do about what lies before me is available to me is available to me through the mind of god within me going up one more time everything that i need to release to release about what lies before me everything that i need to release about what lies before me is available to me is available to me and through the mind of god within me let's do that again everything that i need to do to do about what lies before me everything that i need to do to do about what lies before me is available to me is available to me through the mind of god within me through the mind of god within me through the mind of god within me All right, take a deep breath. Let's get ready for our beautiful prayer with Trish this morning. I am holy, you are holy, we are holy. Just feel that. It goes like this. I am holy, holy, holy. I am holy, holy, holy. I am holy, holy, holy. I am whole. Can you sing that with me now? Here we go. I am holy, holy, holy. I am holy, holy, holy. I am holy, holy, holy. I am whole. Keep saying that. I am holy, spirit divine. 
high and come to me feeling love it's healing me keep singing I am open my heart allow me to see beauty and love it's healing me you are you are holy 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 you are holy 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 you are holy holy if you're in the chat this morning say to someone you are holy let them know this morning you are holy 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 you are holy 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 you are holy 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 you are holy now put your hands up at the screen and say we are everybody we are holy holy give it to our whole community this morning holy 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 we are holy, holy, holy. We are whole. Now, again, not just that last line. We are whole. Think of someone in particular. Say, you are whole. You are whole. Do that one again. You are whole. You are whole. Now put your hands over your heart and say, I am. I am whole. One more time. I am whole. I am Oh, breathing in this wholeness, this holiness from and by and through spirit, breathing in, if we can all just take three deep breaths, letting this golden, golden wholeness pour down from our, our, our head, from our top chakra, down pouring through our beautiful blessed bodies, warming our limbs and pouring through our center, through our legs, down to the center of the earth. This wholeness, this golden energy of spirit connects, connects so deeply, connects us so deeply to spirit, to the earth and to all that is. As God is all, God is the all in all. God is the love and the light and the abundance of this life and this universe. God's abundance is everywhere in the night sky, in the twinkling stars, in the comets and in the universes, beyond the universes. God is the life force energy that pulsates in our veins, that, that breathes our breath, that expands the universe and expands our lives as we breathe it in. And as this breath is my breath, this oneness with God is my oneness, is my divinity. It is my power and my peace and my abundance as it runs through every thought I have, every emotion that I feel, Every action that I take is God. And as this is true for me, this is true for each one within the sound of my voice. This holy wholeness is, is one with all. It can never go away as we can never, ever be separated from us. And it is love. It is the love that binds us. It is the love that cares for us and supports us and is the kindness that emanates from our hearts and our thoughts. And I speak my word and release any thoughts of, of 
fear, known and unknown, any thoughts of separation. And I claim a greater opening to the presence of God in each of our living moments. No matter what we're going through or no matter what we've been through, breathing in the, the expansiveness of spirit, of the multitude of creativity and thoughts to the, to the wholeness and the life that spirit has to offer as our life, as my life. The oneness is always with us and breathing that in and cultivating that presence every day makes it stronger and makes it real. And I give great thanks for this cultivation, this further cultivation of the presence and the abundance and the love of God. And I release my word into the law of mind, knowing that it is already done on every level. And so it is. Amen. That's beautiful, Trish. Thank you. Ah, doesn't that just set you up for the day? <laughs> ah. So, brand new song. I wrote this with Gary Lynn Floyd. Talking about just allowing yourself to just be here. I trust that I got this. I know that I know. I've got all that I need, so it's time to let it go. I'm through with complaining. I'm living life small. Every emotion, I want to feel them all. I've spent too much time censoring who I am. I am open, I am willing, I am feeling free and clear. Finally, I am seeing I am worthy to be here. I am here. I am here. Right now, I am. I am present, I let it all be, I have uncovered the truth about me, the veil has been lifted, that always kept me apart, I'm no longer hiding, I'm ready to start. Step into my power and trust my heart. And I am ready. I am moving. I let go of all my fear. Finally, I know I am enough to be here. I am here. Right now I am here to be here. There's no place I would rather be. It's time I let the whole world see. This brilliant light that shines through me is who I am, who I really am. I am open, I am willing, I am feeling free and clear. Finally, I am seeing, I am worthy. And I am open, I am willing, I am feeling free and clear. Finally, I'm seeing, I am worthy. 
to be here. I am here. I am here. Right now, right here. No more hiding. No more judging. No more playing. That I'm not enough. Because right now I am here. 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 <sighs> now we really are here this morning, aren't we? We have arrived. Um, I've asked a question this morning in the comments, which you may or may not see, but I'm going to ask you to take a look at it. Uh, and I'm saying in the question, if we were to start up our services in Marin County, would you physically come to them? And all you have to do in answer to that is put yes in the comments or um, online if you are somebody who's out of the area or you'd be more likely to stay online. We're just trying to get a sense because we're moving toward that. And I may ask it again during the, um, the celebration this morning for those who aren't with us right this minute, but it would be really helpful to get that feedback from you. So onward to the talk. This morning, I am talking about tell a new story boldly. And the stories that we tell are our interpretation of experiences that we've had or things that people have told us about us or um, things that we believe about ourselves that we have substantiating evidence for or we think we do. And a lot of times the stories that we tell other people about ourselves or our history are stories that um, reveal our weaknesses or our struggles or our pain or what we see as our faults or shortcomings. And sometimes it reflects things that we've interpreted and made up as true, uh, and we believe them, but they may not actually be factual, like this, this story. A nursery school teacher who was taking a carload full of little kids home one day when a fire truck zoomed past them with a Dalmatian, in, uh, the Dalmatian dog in the front seat of the truck next to the driver. And the children in the car started talking about the dog's duties and responsibilities. And one little boy said, they use him to keep the crowds back. And another kid said, no, he's just for good luck. But there was a third child who brought the argument to a close completely when she announced very authoritatively, they use the dogs to find the fire hydrants. Any or all of those things might be true, but it definitely was a conversation where the kids were making logical assumptions and announcing them as facts. We do this in our lives, and the truth is our families, our parents, lovingly have done that. And we've heard stories about ourselves. Well, he's kind of clumsy. She's so forgetful. She never stops talking. He, he couldn't put one foot in front of the other. He's not that smart. That's not his gift. And so we hear those things repeated about us to family members, neighbors, strangers, and we believe them. And then we build a life on top of those things. Or maybe we've had a lot of difficulty with a particular kind of memorization or reciting in school or um, math problems or something. Um, and we m draw conclusions from that. And other kids draw conclusions from that too. So they might say, boy, that you really stank at that or um, no, I don't want her on my team. Or So we hear those stories. And, and then when we're in that context with people that we are beginning to know, we might tell those stories that uh, put us down somehow, that emphasize our negations, that, uh, or that put our family or our ancestors down. You know, there's so many alcoholics in my family. That's why I don't drink. Or so we blame our heredity or the parenting we got or events that happened to us for how we are. And while all those things contribute to 
how we are, who we are. They're not the whole story. And one of the things that happens with us is that repetitions train the brain. They don't only train our brain. They train other people's brains in the way they think about us as well. So the stories that we tell over and over again, I think it's worthwhile to ask us, what stories am I telling about myself that are actually weakening me by the repetition of them? It's not that it wasn't a true event or it isn't one description of me, but that when I focus on that and leave out everything else that is different than that or might contribute to a broader picture of that circumstance, we train ourselves and other people to focus on us from that particular perspective and to believe that particular thing about us. I can remember when I was uh, a junior in high school, I was on a date um, with somebody I liked very much and we were on the way home and he said to me, I wish I didn't have to take you home right now. And although I knew or thought I knew what he meant in terms of spending more time together, I opted to answer from the perspective of someone who doesn't want to impose on anybody, which was kind of my mom's way in the world of making sure we never imposed on anyone. And so I said to him, well, you could drop me off, you know, here and I could walk from here. And he looked at me and he said, I wish you wouldn't do that. And I said, what? And he said, put yourself down like that. And it really uh, caught me up short, but it's something I've always remembered that I was doing myself a disservice by implying that he was done being with me and didn't want to go to the trouble to drive me home when that wasn't what he meant and I knew it. And somehow I think he knew that I knew it. So when we tell stories or we imply things like that kind of response um, to somebody else, the reason that we tell that story is there are all kinds of reasons. One might be we want to head off their judgment of us so we acknowledge the fault up front so they can't criticize us for it because at least we're owning it. We're aware of it. We're maybe trying to do something about it. So we head them off before they can judge us about that. We judge ourselves first. Wave at your screen if you've ever done that, okay? And then sometimes we do it to get sympathy or to get help, but to get sympathy because we're feeling sorry for ourselves. We want somebody else to join us in feeling sorry for us or to excuse our bad behavior. We give a reason, but we're really using it as an excuse for why we behave badly, why our dog behaves badly, why our children behave badly, uh, if, if badly is what they're really doing. We use it also to connect, to belong in a group or with other people. We tell a story that we think is in the context of this group or this place. You know, if you're in a 12-step program, when you tell your story, you do it not only to own it, but also to uplift and help other people who are struggling. When they hear your story and recognize themselves in it, it can encourage them. So there's a purpose to that. So we're trying to tell a story to give hope also and to initiate healing. So all those reasons can be reasons why we might tell a story that casts us in a, a weakened light. And so there's value sometimes in that or in owning a mistake that we've made, but partly it's in the attitude with which we deliver it, and partly it's in the frequency. I hope this is making sense, that every time we tell that story, we reinforce a particular view of ourselves. And in reinforcing that view about ourselves, we also reinforce it in other people's thoughts about us. St. Augustine said, Men go abroad to admire the heights of mountains, the mighty billows of the sea, the broad tides of the rivers, the compass of the ocean, and the circuits of the stars, and yet pass themselves by. We don't understand or remember or grasp what a miracle we are, how amazing it is that we are self-aware we have memory, we have the ability to plan, 
We have the ability to communicate and to evaluate ourselves in situations. And sometimes we have grown up in such a way where we're so enculturated uh, with our families and our cultures and our churches and our uh, spiritual practices and so on that we have learned to focus on and root out the bad or whatever it is that we think is a fault. And yet those things, while they may be facts, are not the truth with a capital T. They're not the spiritual truth of us. They're a temporary phenomenon that maybe appears to have been enduring, but it's a fact, maybe, it might not even be a full fact, but we tend to mix up facts and truth, at least I do sometimes. Truth with a capital T is different than facts. It has a deeper, more expansive, more profound meaning. My, uh, my favorite uh, mystic who's on the planet right now, Father Sean O'Leary, um, said in one of his talks, truth is not the same thing as fact. Something could be factual, but not true. And something could be true, but not factual. Facts are just information or data points about the physical universe. Truth is much different. My definition of truth, he says, is that something is true if it transforms me and aligns me with God. And something is ultimate truth if it transforms me radically and aligns me permanently with God. Now that's a big truth he's talking about. That's the spiritual truth. That's when we find that spiritual truth, it brings us into the alignment of wholeness that is the truth, the absolute spiritual truth of who we are. Now it can be tricky, I admit, for us to look at the spiritual truth and find a way to own that and talk about it and not get lost in ego or bragging. And positive thinking has been misinterpreted that way, that we should always speak positively about ourselves, that we should never admit of any negative anything, um, that we should always say we can do anything. Um, we've never made any mistakes. Now, while those are messages that are spiritually true, and we may want to give that spiritual food to ourselves, it is wise to be judicious about that in conversation. Because if our behavior is out of alignment with that, generally people notice that. And they think of us either as braggarts or hypocrites or liars. So it's helpful to keep affirming the, the spiritual wholeness of ourselves and also to balance what we say about ourselves by speaking about our abilities or our accomplishments in a matter of fact sort of way, not as a bragging sort of way. And to speak about those failures or those that cast us in a negative light more sparingly. We could ask ourselves, why am I telling this story? What is my real motivation for telling this story right now? How has this story's theme not been true in my life? The stories of limitation may be facts, points of data, but they're not the truth. So we could ask ourselves, what else is true? Can I discover and tell a truer story about me, a truer story about who I am or who I intend to be? Um, in my first church, when I was the minister in Santa Rosa, a lot of years ago, we were trying to put forth a statement about who we were as a church. We were about Oh, 150 people uh, in a little church building that had once been a tiny little synagogue for a Jewish congregation in downtown Santa Rosa. And we were looking to grow and we wanted to have a, a statement we could put on every, every bulletin on Sunday, uh, everything we handed out, have it printed up someplace and put it where people could see it. And at one of our leadership council retreats, one of our members of the leadership council brought this in. Now, I don't have the exact um, version of it in print. So this is my clearest memory 
of what it said. It said the Santa Rosa Church of Religious Science, because that's what we were called in those days. The Santa Rosa Church of Religious Science provides through the teaching and practice of the science of mind an atmosphere to know the natural home of God is within the heart of every person. The means to practice this awareness about ourselves and each other and a place to discover this truth about ourselves. We are whole, complete, and perfect just as we are. And that made people cry. There is something so deep about speaking the spiritual truth, not in a bragging way, but a truth that speaks of, this is who I am becoming. This is my intention. This is my vision of what I want to bring to the world, of who I want to be in the world. And to state it, not as some kind of woo-woo saint or uh, some, somebody who speaks only in hyperbole, but as an honest spiritual pilgrim who says, this is my intention. This is what I intend to bring. This is what I intend to become. This is my aim, my intention, what I'm going for. And that allows us the space to recognize that the story of our spiritual truth opens up the possibilities to reveal more of who we are. Because I don't think that we ever become something that we're not. I think what actually happens is that as we let go of these limiting and in some cases completely false ideas of who we are, we begin to uncover parts of ourselves that we have never owned before that are not negative parts, but are very rich, juicy, positive parts of ourselves. So when we're speaking to somebody else about us, maybe we can just stop repeating those put downs or those little statements that um, put us down around somebody else like, well, I don't know, I, I may not know what I'm talking about or, you know, I'm, I'm never this or I'm, I'm always that in some kind of a negative way. Just don't even say those comments. Just stop that and share instead, what am I curious about? What am I exploring? What am I learning? What am I um, passionate about? What am I interested in? What matters? to me without becoming dogmatic or argumentative, but really revealing something of the heart of us rather than the woundedness and the walls. Are you hearing this? I hope that this is coming across as encouraging. I think that when Jesus spoke and said um, that the eye of the, of the body was the lamp of the soul, something like that, the eye I, he said singular, like the third eye. The eye of the body is the lamp of the soul. And when your eye is open, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is closed or dark, your body is filled with darkness. And so the body in that instance could be the form of our lives. When our eyes, our, our spiritual eye, our third eye is open to what God sees, who we are, what God sees. It says in Genesis, and he saw that it was good, each thing that God created, it says, and he saw that it was good. If the infinite sees that it's all good, then when we are seeing something that is less than good, there's something that is yet to be uncovered. And this is true about us as well as it is about any other circumstance in the world, there is more. Those are the facts. What's the truth? So when we go to a practitioner, when we ask for spiritual mind treatment, what we're asking for is for more God, for more truth to be revealed, for the conditions, the circumstances, the weaknesses that we're experiencing or worrying about or afraid of, circumstances, outcomes, conditions, what if, 
When we're worried about those things, we ask the practitioner to see the truth clearly for us. And we let go of those things. We set them aside. We stop it. And we rest in their knowing. In their knowing. Reverend Michael Beckwith says, creation is always happening. Every time an individual has a thought or a prolonged chronic way of thinking, they're in the creation process. Something is going to manifest out of those thoughts. We are unlimited beings. We have no ceiling. The capabilities and talents and the gifts and the power that is within every single individual that is on this planet is unlimited. You can start with nothing and out of nothing and out of no way, a way will be made. That's when you look beyond the facts or the circumstances, when you see beyond them, when you're thinking outside of that box of circumstances or conditions, or you're leaning on the practitioner who's seeing beyond those bounds, outside of those bounds for you, and you just stop, just stop. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, says, and I'll conclude with this, there comes a time, and you know, time, I'm saying, time is always now. There comes a time when everyone must take an uncompromising stand, a time when faith and trust in God alone become the only course of action. This is true for every person seeking spiritual healing. We begin with hope though a fear of the past or the future may still be present. And as we turn to the spirit within, willing to follow wherever it may lead, there comes a new vision and a new purpose. And I would say as well, and a new story. Namaste. Let's take a breath and move right into the prayer In this moment, there is nothing here but God. There is nothing anywhere but God, the unlimited presence of being, showing up as everything my eyes light upon, as every sound I hear, as every emanation of nature, as every unfoldment of human life, there is God. And everything unlike that, everything unlike that wholeness, that beauty, that balance, that peace, that power, that creative love and joy and life and light, anything unlike that is a shadow, as unsubstantial as a shadow. As we let the light grow, by putting our attention on that new story, each one of us becomes brighter. Our lives become filled with light. We shine that light into the corners and we allow some of those shadows to fade as we extend love, as we become a force for good, a person of increase, a place of gifting. I know I am that. I always have been that, regardless of any past history or circumstances or conditions, regardless of this now moment, this is the deep spiritual truth of who I am and of who every single one of us is. I accept and send my roots deep down into this truth of me. I stop speaking words that diminish me. I stop repeating stories of limitation. When I speak anything like that, it is for healing and expressing hopefulness. I embrace the wholeness that I am. I put my attention on it. I'm grateful for it. I share it with an experience of gratitude and peacefulness. 
and love in a matter of fact, easy way. And I'm deeply grateful that this is the truth of me and of all of us now. So I let this word go easily. There's nothing more to do. It's already the truth of who we are. It always has been. So I let it go knowing. I let it go into the law that reveals more of this now and lets it be clear on my path. I let it go. I let it be. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. And I would like to invite you now to join me in the morning affirmation. I'm going to share it with you right now. So here is the one for today, and I'm going to ask you to read this out loud with me right now. I'm discovering a new story of me. What a relief and joy. Starting now, I live my story right out loud. Let's do that again. I'm discovering a new story of me. Breathe. What a relief and joy. Breathe. Starting now, I live my story right out loud. And as we do that, we encourage others to do the very same thing. So now I'm going to invite you to live your story out loud and to consider all the ways in which you are a generous giver. Just think about that. Think about the ways in which you have encouraged your family members, your friends, your children, your grandchildren. Think of everybody you've ever said a prayer for or had a positive hope about. Think of every place you've made a contribution in volunteering, in gifts. Think of money that you've given to transients or things that you've donated to various places for people who need those things. All of those gifts all of those gifts, if you could see them all piled up in the room you're in right now, you would be astounded at the lifetime of good you have already given. And so I'm going to invite you now to give more. If you're willing to donate to Golden Gate Center for Spiritual Living, that's one way to do it. And I've added in the comments the number that you text to in order to make a donation if you'd like to donate by text. So just use that phone number, put in a number, not a dollar sign or decimal point, just a number of what you choose to give and send it and they'll take care of the rest of it for you. There are other ways on the website under the donate tab if you go to ggcsl.org uh, that you can do that. And we invite you also to pray for Golden Gate as we prepare to reopen, to pray for all of us who are involved, to, if we cross your mind, to think of us in love as we go forward, and to know that all of us as a spiritual community, both locally and globally, all of us as a spiritual community are givers and receivers of this good. So we want to bless these gifts, all of these gifts together, and I'm going to invite you to do that with me by putting your hands on your heart and repeating after me. This gift I give is God in action. I now send it forth to bless and to prosper. I know that everywhere it goes, it is creating a world living in love. One heart and one thought at a time. Beginning here with me and mine. And so it is. Yes, thank you, dear hearts. A few announcements this morning. On next Sunday, the day before Memorial Day, I'm going to be including in memoriam during the morning talk, and it will be a slideshow. If a dear one of yours has made their transition, has passed on during this past year, I invite you to email a photo of that person or pet to me at revmary at ggcsl.org 
and tell me who they are, what their relationship is to you, and your name, of course, too, and the date that they passed, that they made their transition. And uh, if I get those, you know, by Wednesday this week, I'll be able to put that together. I think I said Thursday in the newsletter. Um, also, in July, there's a new member class coming up on three Sundays. It's a free two-hour class each of those three Sundays. Uh, taking the class is not an obligation to join. If you'd like to explore what that means at Golden Gate, please email administrator at ggcsl.org and Sonia will put you on the list. Also, I'm going to teach Foundations of Science of Mind in the fall, which is one of our basic classes and all the other classes we offer a land on those basic classes. So Foundations is the first class, you might say, that you need to take to take all the other certificated classes. It's going to start September 21st and run through November 23rd on Tuesday evenings from 6 to 9 p.m. It will probably be online, I'm thinking now. And our two almost newly minted practitioners, Suzanne Dubois and Rachel DePaula, will be assisting me, which is going to be a blast. So I really invite you to consider taking this 10-week class and joining us in the fall. Get it on your calendar now. Registration will open later in the summer. Also, the annual summer conference for Centers for Spiritual Living is going to be taking place online. It's a virtual one this year, Friday and Saturday, August 13th and 14th. Registration opens June 1st and the early bird registration from um, the 1st of June until the 15th of July is $99. I'll tell you more when the website opens up on the 1st of June, but hold that place uh, in your mind. It, it used to be, or in person, it's often at a Silomar. This year, SOAR is online. Finally, be sure you join me for coffee, conversation, and connection following the service. I'm going to put the, um, the links for that also in the comments for this morning, so you'll be able to see that. And if you'd like to join us, you can click that link. It will start about five minutes after the service ends. So that is everything I have to say. Oh, one more thing. You all know that we're going to do a send-off for Mary Cosgrove and uh, Jay Gustafson early in July because they're retiring and moving back to the East Coast. It'll be a picnic or something like that. If you would like to help with that, also let us know at administrator at ggcsl.org and we'll follow up with you and let you know how you can help put that together for a great time for them. All right. All right, dear ones. And now we're going to go on to our closing song and final words. So here's Karen with that. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to put your seat belts on, either that or I want you to get up and dance. This is a little raucous, just gonna give you a warning. Are you ready? This is your part to do, choose to accept it is stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. That's what you get to say. Ready? Oh, I never thought I'd be doing this at church. From early in the morning till the middle of the night My mind keeps coming up with reasons why I can't do nothing right It keeps listening, keeps score till I can't take it anymore When I think it's done, wait, there's more I'm not gonna hide it, it ends today I finally found this answer and all I've gotta say is Just stop it, tell myself just stop it Free little word that I can say Just stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it just stop it! I've been complaining about my looks, been complaining about my hair, been complaining about my body, though I know it's so unfair to keep bragging on myself with such intensity. I've got to practice being nice to me. I gotta love myself, I know it's true. Next time I want to moan, all I've got to do is just stop it. I tell myself, just stop it. Three little words that I Cause I can change my attitude, change my state of mind when I focus on what's right. Everything is fine. I tell my inner critic, get out of the way. I'm taking back my power today. All right, get out your air guitar. Either that or stretch and flex and stretch and flex. Oh my, you've gone rogue. 
the church now. Now I'm going out to dinner and I'm talking with a friend. But when I ask her how she's doing, the story never ends. She goes on and on with such intensity. I've got to help her get some clarity and show her I've found a way to stop that voice in your mind every day. You say, stop it. You tell yourself, just stop it. Just three little words that you can say. Just stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Just stop it. Three little words that we can say. Just stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Just stop it. Three little words that I can say. Just stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Just stop it. All right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I told you, I think that I, I hope you guys loved it. I'm seeing some um, comments in the section that my uh, my Zoom stopped. So I don't know what to tell you. I seem to still be fine for me. I hope I'm there for you now. But thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Karen, for waking us right up and telling us to stop it with those negative stories. Let's get on with the good stuff. And so I want to invite all of you to join us for some of the good stuff. Coffee, conversation and connection uh, in Zoom. You'll see the link in the comments next to this uh, talk when you look at it online and I will see you there. So thanks everybody. Thank you, Karen. Mwah. Bye everybody. Have a great morning. See you soon.